Welcome everybody to this week's Mark Nofri Head Coaches Show. As always, joined by the head football coach at Sacred Heart, Mark Nofri. And coach, I know it was a frustrating one for you as a team. Individually, though, we talk about him every week and want to start the show with Tyler Duby, who, in a losing effort, really gave you guys a chance all afternoon. A school record 13 catches uh, against Central Connecticut. He has almost 500 yards receiving over the last couple weeks. We know he's an outstanding player, one of the all-time greats, but particularly over these last couple weeks, he's elevated his game. What's allowing him to do that? Uh, you know, just he's playing with a lot of confidence. You know, the kid's always prepared. I mean, he watches film, he's in our office, he works at it off the season, in season, after practice. And, you know, we talk about the connection with RJ and they just, they have a knack. You know, and he's been doing it now for four years. And uh, the last two weeks, he's really stepped up his game. And anything that kid does doesn't surprise us anymore. I mean, he's probably one of the best receivers we've ever had here and probably one of the best in the NEC ever. Yep, up over 2,900 receiving yards, first now all time in Sacred Heart history. So that was the individual performance highlight this past week. I know as a team, maybe some uncharacteristic chances uh, that you were unable to take advantage of. And I know it was frustrating, but we're moving on to St. Francis, PA. And I know that uh, with this team, you hear the phrase, what is it, snap and clear <laughs> a lot. So how do you snap and clear from last week into the goal this week of going out to Central or to St. Francis, Pennsylvania and getting a W? Well, we talk about it every week. You know, you got to play 60 minutes. You got to play each snap and every play. And, uh, you know, there was times last week that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Our execution was off a little bit. I, I think the kids, uh, they didn't play with the emotion in the execution they did the last two you know games prior to that and uh we have to move on you know you're sitting there one and one in the league now everybody pretty much has one loss and uh you're ready in the hunt our backs have been up against the wall before and we've come out and on top and our kids need to understand that you know you can't take anybody for granted it's a grind it's a real grind to go through 11 you know football games and a winning college football game it's tough the nec is a great conference and each week anybody can beat anybody so you got to be prepared we got four left um, we're going to St. Francis, who we haven't beaten since 2011, so it's a challenge for us, you know, and, and we got to come back and we got to have a great week of practice, like we talk about each week, you know, your preparation Tuesday through Friday um, pays off for you on Saturday, and then we got to play 60 minutes and we got to be locked in. You know, whoever we take on that trip, those kids have to do something and they have to do their job all the time. One guy who has definitely been doing his job is James Rents. Four tackles for a loss uh, this past week, two and a half sacks. He's really getting into the backfield like you expect him to do. Uh, week after week, disrupting offenses as he does, how does he do it? Well, number one, he, he's got a very high motor. I mean, he's a kid that's got a high energy. He works his butt off in the weight room. Uh, football's important to him. You know, we talked about RJ and Doobie being, you know, what we call a gym rat or a film guy. You know, they love football. That's what James Rents is, and he brings an intensity and a work ethic that's unbelievable. And I, and I credit, you know, Coach Wisman for putting him in different positions and changing up some of the schemes and moving him around and, and taking what James does best, which is rush the passer and cause havoc and put him in situations where he can succeed. And he's done that. And like I said, it starts with James in terms of his ability and how hard he works and the motor. It just never stops. You talk about a kid. I don't, I don't even know if he sleeps at night because he's always going, but he's really done a great job for us, you know, since the Dartmouth game. You know, you alluded a couple of moments ago about the NEC and the parody. There are uh, five teams with only one loss. Nobody is unbeaten anymore, so it is kind of wide open. Uh, you have St. Francis this week. You also have the experience, I think, of the last couple of years, knowing that you've got to answer the bell on Saturday afternoon. How does that help you maybe focus for the goal this week, one week at a time? Well, it, it shows the kids that it can be done, number one. Um, like I said, we had our backs against the wall last year. We had a win out the last three games. Two of them were on the road. And then you come home and you play Bryant, who was a great football team last year, and we did it. This year, we're, we're, it's the same thing. The only difference is I lost 26 seniors. So some of the kids that you're seeing are kids that haven't played very much or young kids that we're putting in a position to play. Um, they need to understand it can be done, but there's a certain level of uh, – experience that comes with it as well, but they have to go out and they have to perform. And they know that they got the confidence that they can do it. They have to go out and perform and do it for 60 minutes and not do it once in a while or every fourth play. They have to do it all the time. Whether you, I told them the other day, whether you play one play or 100 plays, it doesn't matter. You're giving us 100% on each snap and every play. So it can be done, it's been done. Um, now we just gotta get the kids to execute it and they, they can see that it's there um, if they continue to play like they did two weeks prior. 
another long trip out to western Pennsylvania. You certainly have your practice at traveling this week, so you have that experience. And uh, two very good FCS players are going to be in this showdown. Obviously, Dewey, uh, Doobie, and then there's uh, Kahari Dixon of St. Francis U. So what should fans expect this weekend in Loretto? Oh, I'm expecting us to come out ready to play. I think our kids will be fired up. They know what's at stake. Um, like I said, we haven't beaten them since 2011, so it's a challenge for us, and we challenge the kids this week, the coaching staff, and we want to see if they're going to step up. You know, Dixon's an unbelievable running back. You know, he's probably one of the best one AA running backs in the country, if not the best running back in the country um, for our level, and, you know, he's we got to contain him. You know, they have a very good receiver. Uh, they got a quarterback that's, uh, you know, very good as well. He's only a junior. He did a great job for him last year. Um, his percentage rate is pretty high. And then uh, you look at them on defense, and they are much improved. They run around. They got some guys that safety, you know. Lorenzo, he's he's unbelievable. He's a good returner. I think he's returned three kickoffs already for him. So they got some players, and uh, Chris has done a great job down there turning around the culture and getting some good players in. And, and you know, after watching all these guys on tape, I, I think that they're one of the best teams in the conference, hands down. Another tough opponent, another tough Saturday, but looking forward to the trip. Good Thanks. luck this week. Mark Nofri, the head coach of Sacred Heart Football. It'll be St. Francis University and Sacred Heart at noon out in Loretto, Pennsylvania. The game is available on NEC Front Row, and we also have the call for you on the Shoe Sports Network by following the audio link on the sacredheartpioneers.com page.